Hey everyone, it's Daryl from Houseplant Journal, and this is Dave from Dave's Airplant Corner. Hello. So what we're going to do today is uh, I have brought him one of my light meters, the LTH meter. So one of the reasons why I wanted to do this was because you know I've I've seen you have lots of plants and you've grown them very successfully. We're going to obviously do a nice tour to show you the the plants in your collection, but that you've told me before you've, you've never really measured light, right? Yeah, not yeah. as much. Sometimes I just eyeball it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, and I think most people, most people do eyeball it. But the thing is then when we communicate with other growers, then we're just saying things like, oh, we give it bright indirect light. And honestly, it doesn't really help people, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so earlier we were talking about how, you know, you've got this huge north facing window and even though it's north facing and covered by trees, <laughs> it's still very large and we're gonna measure it and so we can actually then make sense of a lot of the kind of descriptive things we say about light but put a number to it so that we can actually then communicate with other people how we grow plants and and clearly your plants are successful so that's sort of like the, the proof, right? We see, uh -huh. we, it's like a reverse engineering. We see the plant has done well and then we can measure it and tell someone, okay, I've had this plant for X number of years yeah. at this, light level or this grow light level or something. Mm -hmm. And then someone like me, if I want to try the same plant, then you know, you tell me those things and then I can try it for my own plant. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. All right. So let's uh, start with unboxing. Okay. All right. Let's take a look. Ta-da. Nice. Oh, that's a nice strap. You know where I got inspired by the strap? You know, like Leica cameras? Oh. There's really, really chunky straps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do with the strap. Cool. Okay, so first things first, you need your AAA batteries. Do you have your AAA batteries? Oh, upstairs. <laughs> okay, yes, you go, go ahead and get those. So some people have complained that it's very difficult to take off this battery cover, right? If, oh. you, if you just keep try to keep pushing it like this, it, it tends to be a little like hard. But actually, if you just hold it, like this with one hand, putting your palm kind of on the back and then your fingers up here on the, on the, yeah, mm, you can just kind of mm, like that, right? Yes. You just, just kind of yeah, twist just it off. Pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> you get to uh, peel off the plastics oh, if, yes. if you want. I don't know if you're, are you one of those people who yep. like keeps plastic on? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. So, so in order to turn it on, you just, Hold, press and hold the power button for two seconds mm -hmm. and it'll turn on or off. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Basically when you measure light, obviously we know that light, especially for natural light, it changes all the time. So when you measure, you're really just kind of sampling that at that moment. Mm -hmm. So that's why measuring always has to be done in concert with knowing how the, how the light changes. So mm -hmm. we'll first just cover measuring in general, right? right? And that is, you'll see that the number changes almost like every second, like yep. even just moving around, right? Mm -hmm. So that means we're not gonna kind of look for just, oh, it's 60 versus 63, like that's not gonna make a difference. Right. What makes a difference is like ranges. So if you're like 50 to 100, 100 to 200, mm -hmm. 200 to 400 is another range for natural light. Right. And then 400 to 800, then you're basically like, almost if your whole wall was windows, would be mm -hmm. almost 800, right? Yeah. Once the sun shines on the light meter, the, the number goes up to the thousands, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So that's why when I'm talking about any, any foot candle number under a thousand, you know that we're dealing with indirect light. Mm -hmm. uh, for, and this is all for natural light, right? The context yes. for natural light. So basically what we do is we would just, you know, pretending if, oh, I want to put this Hoya right here, right. right? Then you would just measure like this yeah, and pretend that this little white uh, dome is like a leaf, a plant, yeah. right? So you, anywhere around here, you just kind of sample all over. 66. 60s, yeah, this back side. This side would be really low. Really low, because yeah. obviously we're not facing a window on yeah. this side, right? Yeah, so so we would be like, okay, we're in the- four. So we're between 50 to 100, right? Yeah. So then we would go to the chart at houseplantjournal.com, and then I have a listing for Hoya, which, which, which says that, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, that like a minimum for maintenance would be a hundred, mm -hmm. right? So then 
we would conclude that, okay, we shouldn't put this Hoya here. Yeah. Because 70 is never going to get much higher than that. Barely grow or. It it would just barely. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. But let's maybe move closer to the window and then see how much brighter it is closer to this window over here. 158, 145, 160. Nice. It depends on the cloud sometimes too. Yes. So you can see right here, we're like right beside an almost two story high window section here. And as we noted before, it is covered by trees, but this is the north side you said, so the sun doesn't really ever Mm -hmm. like cross into this path. Uh, Like, Around six, 5 p.m. maybe, yeah, there's some, but okay. just Enough. for a very short period of time. Yeah. Right. And not all the plants get covered either, yeah. Right. So mostly just indirect. Yeah. yeah. So, so then that means for this area, mm-hmm. we would kind of, kind of rate this place as, okay, between 100 to 200 foot candles most of the day. Yeah. And maybe zero direct sun or like one hour. Yeah. Well, about one hour? Yeah, well, about one hour. Okay. So we've measured some light at your, at your north facing window here. And as we saw, because it's a big window, when you go right up close to it, it's still in the like 100 to 200 foot candle range, right? Right. So the way that we need to understand, and earlier I talked about like how you uh, have to think about how the light changes throughout the day, right? Mm-hmm. So for natural light, we have to always consider two different parameters. The first one is <clears throat> how, how many hours does direct sun shine right on the plant? Right. And it could be zero, it could be one, it could be two hours, it could be three hours, right? Mm-hmm. So that's why on my chart, there's a column that says tolerance for direct sun. Right. And various plants, they can tolerate, you know, various number of hours, obviously depending on the leaf structure and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But really what you're concerned about with the number of hours is that when it starts getting too high, then I'm sure you've noticed for maybe the plants on your other side yep. that you have to keep up with watering more, yes, more, more. vigilantly, right? Because mm-hmm. if you let it wait a day and the sun hits it again and the, the soil is nearly like totally dry, yeah. then you, you'll see like significant wilting and maybe even like a permanent wilt where like the plant doesn't, like the, the foliage just dies, right? Yes. So that's where you worry about the duration of direct sun. Mm-hmm. Then, at other times of the day, maybe the sun, the sun moves away, or in your case, most of the rest of the day, mm-hmm. that's when we take the light meter and measure the level of indirect light, which is completely correlated to how big the window is. Or yeah. effectively, when I say view of the sky, it's how big that view is, mm-hmm. right? Which is why when we're standing here, when you, you put the light meter right up against this window, yeah. you're like 200 foot candles. Yes. But when we come back to we're like what 10, 10 feet from the, the window now, yeah. you're only getting 70, mm-hmm. right? So effectively, when I say view of the sky, it, it is literally sensitive to just even moving farther from the window, even yeah. just a slight, right? Mm-hmm. So that's talking about how we, uh, like the parameters, I, I guess I mean, for, for natural light. Yeah. So if you think about it, we can now describe any window, any position, any number of windows even with those two parameters, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't care if it's south facing, I don't care if it's north facing, I don't care if you're southern hemisphere or northern hemisphere. If we have these parameters, they're like, they're, they're, I guess you could say fundamental enough that every possible window, every possible location can be, can be analyzed in this way, Mm -hmm. right? Now that's, that's only the context for natural light for a window. Right. Now, now let's talk about grow lights. Mm-hmm. Grow lights, it's a different context, so we have to consider them with different parameters. Yeah. And those two parameters are first measuring, so yeah. measuring at whatever distance mm-hmm. you are from the plant, and then the duration you keep the grow light on. Yes. Right? So and let's I have a lot of those. Yes, I know that that's why <laughs> I was excited to come here because I know you have lots of different grow light setups. Yeah. So we're going to go around and look at your different grow light setups. And mm-hmm. I'm also going to, you can also show us any kind of really interesting plants because I mean, <laughs> Dave has a lot of really cool plants that I don't have. And that's, so it's always fun to come and visit yeah. uh, really interesting looking plants. All right. So let's, let's go take a look. 
Sounds good.